Thanks. Uh, and thanks everyone for attending. Uh, I made the mistake of making my little window a bit bigger so I can see all kinds of fun people um, listening to me today. So thanks very much. Uh, this is an orientation presentation. So this presentation takes a step back um, to help folks that are new to GeoServer kind of figure out which way is up um, and find your way. Uh, so to introduce myself, my name is Jody Garnett. Um, and yeah, uh, uh, I'd like to just acknowledge my employer, Geocat. Geocat's a passionate open source company from the Netherlands. Uh, they've got folks in uh, the Netherlands, Spain, and Canada. Um, I also do some work in the open source community, most directly with projects such as GeoTools and GeoServer, uh, but I also volunteer with a couple software foundations. The Open Source Geospatial Foundation is the one you might be familiar with. And as a volunteer, I'd like to help uh, development teams succeed. So there's a number of popular community talks we do for GeoServer. The State of GeoServer talk is kind of a team update that focuses on new capabilities. I'll be doing a very cut down version of that with Andrea Amy later today. Um, we do a GeoServer feature frenzy, which gathers up all the beloved features and some tips and tricks that we're really proud of, things we think are cool. And then we've also done a GeoServer ecosystem talk. Um, there we go. Uh, that looks at how GeoServer is used around the world. But today's talk is GeoServer orientation for folks who have just downloaded GeoServer and wonder, what does it do again? So if that's you, um, you're in the right spot. So moving along, what is GeoServer for? Um, out of the box, it's for sharing spatial information, but there's a bit of depth behind this quick statement. So uh, GeoServer is an open source server for sharing geospatial data. Um, that's not just drawing a map. It also is providing access to the data, um, providing editing capabilities so the community you're working with can uh, not only uh, publish information, but share information between themselves. Um, now this vision, uh, the design for interoperability, uh, publishing from any major spatial data source using open standards, this really pushes the whole attitude and approach of the project. We want you to uh, share your data so you reach the most people you possibly can. We share it with these open industry standards um, so that over time, we're adding more protocols over time. So if you publish your geospatial data with GeoServer, uh, we'll add more protocols over time. The goal is always for you to publish and share with the widest audience. Um, we also want to respect your existing infrastructure, your existing GIS team. So if you're managing your data in MongoDB or Oracle, we want it to stay there. Um, and GeoServer is going to stream it out on the fly and publish it to the internet. We don't want to disrupt uh, your current approach, your current infrastructure. Um, so in terms of publishing maps, uh, we're going to work with a, a layer model. So each data set is going to be published as a layer of content. You can actually defy, uh, gather out that content into a layer group. So you might stack together a series of layers maybe to arrange the layers into a base map. Um, we do have a small kind of layer preview uh, built into GeoServer that's really just intended um, for local testing. That is not GeoServer. GeoServer is really pulling that data into QGIS or pulling that data into your own web mapping project. So GeoServer in this case is a rendering engine. It's producing maps that's going to be arranged, uh, accessed from web clients and desktop clients. <clears throat> so GeoServer is about the result, publishing a map rather than just being a very good uh, web map server. So um, we're get, we can publish that map, which is good for ad hoc uh, requests to draw imagery. We can also publish an entire tile set of data. Um, the result doesn't always look like an image. Sometimes it's SVG or KML, which is a little bit of vector output mixed in with styling. Some extensions provide things like PDF output for printing um, or vector tile generation for um, pre-processing the output so it can be used on uh, client-side rendering. Um, the same holds true for vector data. So we are set up to share the data being used to draw the map. Um, 
So to reach a, reach a wide audience, this supports queries, a range of output formats, and more output formats are available to install. Um, the sharing doesn't stop at the, at, uh, at just publishing the information. It also lets you uh, share and edit the vector data. So GeoServer is not used to interactively edit data. Instead, it uh, provides a protocol that QGIS or, or an open layer, open layers uh, app would be using to edit the data. Uh, and those same protocols can be used by your own scripts uh, for batch processing and editing. We did, uh, uh, just as a hint, when you set GeoServer up, if you don't intend to let people edit your information, be sure to double check that editing is turned off. Um, and we also provide direct access to the raster information. So for things like imagery, digital elevation models, or net CDF for scientific uh, modeling. The language here is called a grid coverage. Um, and that's to emphasize that we are communicating raw measurements, not always just visualization for display. Just gonna pause there. Um, yeah, so that's largely what GeoServer is about. The next section we're gonna get into is how to use it. So our top level goal of sharing information. Um, so it's not, yeah, uh, it's not quite as easy as um, drag and drop just because the application is uh, developed so many different capabilities over time. So it provides a web application for configuration and setup. And there's also a REST API for available for automation. Um, please note the, this web UI is not really GeoServer. This is only used to set up by, you know, one or two administrators. Um, it's the actual web services, which are the main application. And those are available over on the right hand side of the screen. These service capabilities are the um, are the endpoints that you put into open layers or QGIS. For my example here, I'm going to use a natural earth data set. Um, the first um, the first thing we're going to look at is a workspace. So a workspace is used as a folder to organize conference uh, organize content. It also has a little XML namespace. Um, that's used to segregate um, the XML content. So the workspace name is going to be used as a prefix for each layer. Um, each namespace needs a unique URI um, and one of the namespaces can be used as the default. So I can go ahead and make a new workspace. Um, you can see I've put, given it the name NE uh, and provided a, a little made up URI there. The next one we're going to talk about is a data source. So this represents a connection to information. Um, so a shapefile is going to need a file location, a database is going to need connection parameters, and we're going to be managing these data sources within a workspace. So in this case, I've got, um, I've got my cultural uh, data source, which is going to uh, be hooked up to a directory of shapefiles on disk. Uh, the data source name is internal to GeoServer, so we can switch between shapefiles and Oracle and Postgres, uh, and no, no downstream client is going to know the difference. Um, we call this a data store um, in some cases because we are uh, focused, occasionally focused on storing, editing, and thus storing information. Um, we can add new vector data sources. So here I am setting up um, a directory of shapefiles. We can also add a raster data source. So this is uh, scrolling ahead and adding, um, publishing a single GeoTIFF. The next level, once we've connected to our data, we can go ahead and publish it as a layer. Um, so one thing, um, to keep in mind is when we are publishing a layer, we are publishing the content. Um, it's not only the WMS kind of layer visualization, we're also publishing all the data sources, or sorry, we're publishing all the data access at the same time. So we've got a little bit of a checklist uh, when we go through to uh, publish information. We need to check that the name, that there's a name and title for the layer. We need to check that there's 
the spatial reference system, what um, that's used for the data. And then we also need to know the bounds of the layer. So each time we publish, we need to check that information. Each protocol is gonna use a different word for its data product, layer, feature type, coverage, tile set, et cetera. Um, so to publish a new vector layer, um, I can go into my data source. I can identify one of the data products in there um, and hit add new layer. I'm then gonna go through my little checklist and make sure that I've got the name and title and abstract filled in. I can then go through and click uh, compute from bounds and, and check the spatial reference system showed up okay. And then I can hit save. And then finally, I'm able to use that layer preview to make sure my data looks as I expect. The same process roughly holds true for a raster data set. I can go through and um, publish one of the raster layers, in this case, Natural Earth 1, and see that in the layer preview. Putting these two concepts together, I can create a layer group. And this represents a stack of information um, so in this case, I'm gathering up several of the layers I already made uh, into a base map. So one thing to keep in mind is the order of the layers when I add them is going to be in draw order. Um, and we can also use these layer groups to uh, group our information into like a table of contents structure. So if I go through and add a new layer loop, layer group, I can define the name and, and the title. I can then go through and add the layers. In this case, I'm drawing the raster base layer first, uh, and then the vector uh, layer on top. And then I can click generate bounds and save. And then we can see the resulting layer group. So this is the steps that we're using when we're uh, publishing information in, in GeoServer. First of all, making a workspace then making a data source to connect to our content, and then publishing that content as a layer. Um, and then if needed, gathering those layers up into a layer group. The one part we missed is styling. So in order to take some control over how that, uh, how that map is drawn, um, out of the box, we use an XML format called SLD that's really intended for machine to machine use. So please don't edit those by hand. We really recommend you use a human friendly format such as CSS, or there's one called YSLD. Um, we do have a number of built-in styles provided, and there's also a styles folder, which is used for to manage icons and fonts. Um, so moving on on that, I can make a new style. Um, in this case, I'm going to select a new polygon style and hit generate. And it's going to make me a, a surprisingly lovely uh, gold polygon in this case. Um, I can fill that in with a, a style definition. This one here is done in YSLD. And what I'm doing here is I'm mapping from the different uh, map color nine categories to different colors. Um, and the style editor allows me to interactively preview that change as I'm editing the style. Okay, um, I can then associate that style with one of the layers to be published and that shows up in my layer preview um, and also in my group layer preview. Okay. So Jody, I've uh, got yep. a couple of questions coming in just to which yep. pick up on stuff you've already said. Uh, firstly, Hugo says, uh, um, sorry, De Carlo uh, says, supported, supported projections when connecting to PostGIS, question mark. How do we, how do we choose a service? So what, what projections are supported in relation to PostGIS? That's a good question. So um, GeoServer uh, Geo includes a complete EPSG database. Um, and so it can dynamically reproject the data from how it's stored in PostGIS into whatever the, um, the, the client is asking for. So in general, we want you to leave your data unprocessed in PostGIS, and we want to take care of that for you on the GeoServer side. Um, does that answer your question? 
there's no real fixed limitation on your on your projection in PostGIS. Yeah, so everything that's supported in PostGIS it will be supported in JS over effectively. There might be a few corner cases if you've made your own custom projection, um, but there are ways to address that uh, in the GeoServer configuration. Okay. Uh, the other question was the relation and, and uh, between the relation and differences. This is from Hugo uh, between GeoServer and GeoExplorer. Is that something you're familiar with? I'm trying to remember what GeoExplorer is. I thought GeoExplorer was like one of these. Um, web frameworks for putting together a web map. GeoServer is the service behind the scenes that publishes the data. You can have a variety of clients such as QGIS or OpenLayers or I believe GeoExplorer to, um, uh, to, to interact with your end users there. Does that help? I might, I might not remember what GeoExplorer is. Yeah, I mean that's something that maybe um, Hugo could follow up with you afterwards if that's not clear. Sure. Um, Great, that was it, carry on. Thanks. Um, just peeking under the hood for a second, how does it work? Um, GeoServer is a, a Java web application. Uh, it's structured into a series of little components. We can see it uses the GeoTools library under the hood, which is one of the projects I work on. Uh, it uses something called Java Advanced Imaging to do all the heavy lifting and image processing. Um, and then within inside GeoServer, it's got a core uh, consisting of the catalog of all the information we're publishing, a data directory where we're storing our configuration, and a resource pool, which is managing all the connections to PostGIS and Oracle and the different NetCDF files and so on. Um, on top of this, we've got that web administration application we were looking at. That's constructed with Wicket and OpenLayers. Uh, there's a REST API uh, for programmatic access. And then we've got a dispatcher, which um, is how we accept incoming requests uh, from WMS and WFS and web coverage service. So making maps, publishing vector data, publishing raster data. And then we've got a little component called GeoWebCache, which supports a lot of the tile set protocols, tile map service web map tile service and so on. And this is open-ended. So if you install an extension, you can teach it how to teach GeoServer new tricks. So we could install an extension to support uh, web processing service, for example. Um, just looking at that, um, uh, GeoServer is a Java web application. It uses the popular Spring framework. Um, which is really nice. It means a lot of folks are, are comfortable with how GeoServer is wired up already. It uses the Apache Wicket user interface. Um, this is a framework only Java developers could love, um, but it has proven stable for us for over a number of years. The modular architecture is a real success factor for open source projects and GeoServer um, uses that to enable our community to build extensions. And, I already mentioned GeoTools and Java Advanced I, uh, JP, Java Advanced Imaging. Um, just in terms of GeoServer, beyond the core application, um, because we've got that modular architecture, there's a lot of extensions available. So official GeoServer plugins are called extensions. Extensions are formally part of GeoServer. They must meet the same QA checks. They must have documentation. Um, they uh, are just as supported as that core application you download and they are included in each release process and the version numbers match. So the extensions are kind of optional installs, but they are GeoServer. We also have, you know, here's some popular extensions an Oracle data store. Um, you know, if you're uh, stuck using Oracle for your data management policies, GeoServer can support it. Web processing service, um, if you're, you know, using cloud um, storage, uh, GeoMesa and um, MongoDB and other things are supported. Um, an interesting one is called GeoFence, which is an entirely um, new security model on top of GeoServer or vector tiles for uh, generating kind of pre-processed tiles for client-side rendering. We also have a little community play area. Uh, called community modules. These are really to share R&D ideas. So it's very helpful when working with grad students um, or different consulting teams allows them to share their work. But these are very much use at your own risk. They're not part of GeoServer yet. Um, you're expected to compile these yourself. 
et cetera. Um, there's lots of kind of fun community modules, um, things like MapML, and uh, there's a SAP plugin. Uh, and what I'm excited about is the OGC uh, API uh, for features. This is the next round of OGC standards is in R&D currently. Um, and this is an example of where GeoServer will add new protocols over time. Just to sum up, GeoServer is brought to you by a number of good folks. Um, there's a core project steering committee of which I'm a member. Um, and GeoServer is set up as an open source geospatial foundation project. Um, you know, with a steering committee and so on. And it's a mix of skills with developers, users, um, and managers joining the team over time. Um, the project also has a really strong history of collaboration, both at the personal level, but also across organizations. So GeoBoot Server was started by the Open Planning Project, um, and then it's joined up with other organizations over time, so Geosolutions, Refractions, Research, and so on. Um, and then my own company that I work with is uh, Geocat has recently joined. Um, it's also a very at large uh, kind of R&D scene with different research labs and consulting companies and others adding new features over time. Uh, Jody, I've got a, um, before you tell people to try it out, I've got a, a question for you on SLD. Uh, Laura is yeah. asking, uh, just in relation to your comments on SLD, what's the background to that? She says, why should we not use SLDs? She um, often exports SLDs from QGIS and use them for rasters in GeoServer. Is, is that yeah, not yeah, best practice? Yeah. And that's fine. SLD is fine as long as you've got a program like QGIS writing it for you. I just, I like you better than that. I don't want you to write SLD by hand. That's all. So SLD is used for machine to machine, QGIS to GeoServer. It's not used by you typing it in. That was all I meant. And another one um, yeah. from Shailesh, who says he's used, used GeoServer some years ago and he found layer security a bit, uh, it's as difficult to, to set up. Has that improved? Um, I'm not sure if it's been approved. GeoServer it improved, has a... improved. Has it, has it, you know, has it, has it got easier to set up, I think is the answer than it used to be, is the I... question rather. Yeah, I haven't set it up yet, yet myself, so I can't comment on that specific one. But I do know that folks are adding more security integrations uh, over time. Uh, in particular, it's, there's been a hotbed of people adding different OAuth security uh, extensions over time. So I can't comment to that specific one. I just know that GeoServer is very flexible for integrating with different security systems. Okay. Um... We've got a, a couple more um, yeah. questions if, uh, if you're I'm just happy gonna to, go to carry on. Next part and then I'll take some questions. Okay, that's fine. Yep. Let's so there's a binary download, so you can try this out on the command line. This is really intended for testing or evaluation. Uh, there's also a web archive that you can install into an application server. We, we recommend Tomcat. We don't have any Windows or uh, Mac OS installers right now. Um, our build machine we had a, uh, that, that built these things was vandalized uh, maybe two years ago, and we haven't had anyone step up to uh, offer a replacement yet. Um, we don't have a Docker, uh, we don't have an official Docker image right now. Uh, every different organizations around the world are enjoying making their own. Um, I'd love to see some collaboration there. And a few off companies are offering, offering hosted GeoServer. Here's a, a gleeful example of running um, GeoServer on the command line. Okay, now I will do thanks and, and welcome questions. Great, thanks Jody. That was a, a great um, run through. Um, so yeah, we've got three or four more questions that are, are coming in. Um, Roberto says, uh, again, coming back to this CSS SLD question, what, what program, <laughs> what packages would you recommend for creating CSS and SLD? Mm -hmm. So CSS is recommended for typing by hand. It's really approachable to folks for, with a, uh, a web developer background. I, if I'm typing things by hand, I tend to use YSLD, which is has all the same like uh, ideas as, as SLD, but it's expressed as YAML. So it's a little bit easier on the eyes as I type it in. And one thing that's nice is if you use these approach at any time, you can ask GeoServer to generate out you 
generate out for you the, um, the corresponding SLD. So you don't need to feel like you're being locked into a specific geo server way of doing things. Um, okay, that, yeah, actually Roberto said why SLD. That I, I assume that was a typo, but that's my ignorance. So uh. yeah, that's fine. Um, I've also, though, a recent addition we'll talk about later this morning is we've just added Mapbox style support for a geo server. So you could write a JSON file that would be used to style in GeoServer, but it would also be uh, directly usable by um, client-side uh, libraries such as um, Mapbox, uh, JS, GL, something. I always get it wrong. Um, in terms of programs, the company I work for has a product called GeoCat Bridge, which can export out styles from QGIS or ArcMap desktop and generate out SLD and configure GeoServer for you. And that's really very powerful. Um, you can try that out. It offers much better fidelity um, from the QGIS styles to GeoServer, making use of a lot of the vendor options and so on to get to get fonts and special effects right. So yeah, thanks. So, yes, yeah, so I've had a look at that myself actually, and it's quite a nice, mm -hmm. uh, very nice little package. Um, so let me just crack on with a couple more questions. Uh, Yavu says, can you talk a bit more about the GeoMesa? expression uh, extension if i've pronounced it right i'm i'm not quite sure what to say uh it's a really it's a really nice uh, group behind it from ccri um they've actually set up the project with the vendor neutral uh, eclipse foundation uh, as part of the location tech working group um i i believe it's written in scala i can't quite remember but what i've seen some amazing demos with it where They'll take a query and distribute it across their cluster and pull back, you know, little summaries of very, very large data sets. Um, uh, I see it mostly used with WMS for visualization and then also uh, using the GeoServer web processing uh, endpoint. Uh, so using GeoServer as a standards compliant front end to all the power of the GeoMesa backend. Does that help? I don't have a ton to say about it except that if you've got you know, lots of data, it's a, a good approach. Great, thanks. Um, a couple from Nile says, first of all, uh, uh, can, REST, can the REST API be used to automate the layer publishing process? Yes, that's exactly what it's for. Great, and second, can I query on published layers via PostGIS queries? Can you query unpublished layers? On, on, can I query on published layers? via PostGIS queries? Um, so GeoServer is speaking a standard and the WFS endpoint does allow you to issue queries against the, um, the feature content that is published, but it's not a general purpose like SQL in to your database. It is restricted to the queries supported by that protocol. One thing you can do is you can set up a kind of fill in the blank SQL expression um, and then publish that as a layer. So, um, and then you, so you can use that to do joins across tables and publish the results of more complicated queries, but you can't do general purpose like SQL inserts uh, through GeoServer. Um, okay. Perhaps I'm reaching a bit for that answer. You can clarify if that was correct. Uh, well, I'll leave the, the person the question to, to, to put it in chat if they've got any more to say on that. Uh, so a couple more. Somebody just says, as a comment, really, the SLD cookbook is amazing for editing SLDs. It is. Um, I will also point out that the SLD cookbook has been translated for each um, standard. So you can see the same examples in YSLD and CSS and Mapbox style. And somebody says, is the YSLD format supported by the REST API? Yes, the REST API supports any of the standards. The REST API is just used to configure GeoServer. And so if the GeoServer UI supports um, a, a standard, it's supported by the REST API. Great. Um, and Mark, um, who's giving the next talk, also says GeoStyler is a viable option. That's true. I, I forgot to recommend that. That's a JavaScript uh, library that's really good at converting between different styling formats. And I'm quite fond of the project. 
Um, and as chair of the incubation committee, I'm really happy to see that they've taken the first steps towards joining the OSGO Foundation. That's great. So Mark, Mark may want to say more than that, that in his session. Uh, so one more, the last one I'm going to throw at you, uh, Jody. Uh, somebody says, um, training materials and contact information, question mark. Um, yes and yes. Uh, so if we go to the GeoServer website, um, under commercial support, there's a wide range of folks, uh, organizations um, that we uh, recommend for you work with. Uh, there's also a, a section on community um, contacts with all our, uh, the user list and developer list and so on. Um, you can reach me at Jody Garnett uh, at Twitter if you like. And thanks for attending my talk. I do have one question answer here, just a small mini production checklist for folks. If you do use GeoServer before you go into production, change the default username and password. I know it's a small thing, but um, just trust me, please change it. Um, also change the master password used to encrypt stuff on disk. And we've got this wonderful guy called Claudius, who was the first GIS cartographer for the Romans. Uh, he's so old. He was used in, um, in GeoServer 1 and in GeoServer 2 there. So he's been with GeoServer for a long time. Please update your contact information uh, when you go to publish online.